Hello and thank you for joining us on this brand new episode of the program Sport Pizza. Of course, you know it's the biggest, the boldest, and where you get the absolute best in the ever exciting world of sports. My name is Brownson Uwana. Now, last weekend was a very exciting moment to watch sports. Now, for Nigeria, it was like a redemption call after we lost. Um, I mean, last week, I think Thursday thereabouts, we came back in a very full swing last Sunday, and of course, we got the job done in a grand style. Now, there are lots of permutations right now because, uh, I mean, we've got uh, Kate Fred, who, is, who has seven points right now. They stand a very good chance of qualifying to the final playoff of the World Cup. But of course, Super Eagles of Nigeria has nine points. So it will still go down to the wire. But I'm sure in the other next two games, we should be able to grab all six points and qualify. And guess what? In Europe, it was fantastic. European Nation League came to its climax. And of course, guess what? The French national team left it late. It was a game that had everything. Controversy. Now, there were talks about Mbappe's goal, if, if it was offside or not. VAR checked it and said it was offside. So, who are we to argue? Now, there was some also big thing happening in the world of boxing. Now, we saw Tyson Fury outclassing his opponent in that one. We talked about that and much more on the show. This weekend, also, big games to come. We'll be giving you all the fun what you need to know. But first, let's take a very quick break. When we come back, more to come. Welcome back. Now, at this point, my strike partner, Lakuli Philippe, joins me on the program. Kuli, good to have you on the program. Yeah, great to be here, Brownson Iwana. It was uh, Last week was full of uh, thrills and excitement. And uh, we saw great footballing spectacle. Mm -hmm. We're from the African scene, yes. Uh, the, Afri the World Cup qualifiers, the Super Eagles of Nigeria were not really uh, convincing. And um, when you look at uh, what was obtainable in Europe, the European Nations League final, uh, you know, compared to what we saw in the African continent, you want to say that, you know, there's still a lot to be yeah, done uh, in the African continent. But it was a good one. Uh, Nigeria coming back to... Uh, you know, redeem their image. Do we, do we call that rede redemption? Well, it's, maybe that's what it is. Now, let's talk about um, the African um, qualifying series of the World Cup. It was a very fantastic moment uh, last weekend. Now, most Nigerians got their heart broken at the Teslim Balogun Stadium. But that uh, was mended. Now, even though six points could have qualified us to the World Cup, but now we are in a situation where we need to win our other two games. Now, instead of six, we need at least four points to qualify, and that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot, uh, compared, considering the fact that one wouldn't have expected uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria uh, to lose to a team ranked uh, about 124 uh, in the world. And I tell you, Brownson, uh, next month when the FIFA ranking will be released, uh, we're going to drop we're gonna down, drop, yes. down, down the order, and that's what happens when a team ranked in the top in the top 40 uh, yeah. loses to a team ranked above 100 that's absolutely disappointing i think that um, you know uh, when you look at what we talked about last week uh, we, we analyze some of the problems we might uh, we might face uh, against Central African Republic and those problems and it played out exactly how exactly we, we, we analyze it. It. it was it was very disappointing it looks like general Tro is absolutely predictable but let's not uh, let's let's look at the two games uh, we have left uh, we have won against uh, I think it was it's going to be against Liberia in Douala I think that will be an advantage for us because we are not playing in Monrovia we are playing in Cameroon uh, that's the home ground uh, the Liberians have chosen and so it will be a very good one for us. The Liberians are down uh, because they lost in the dying minutes of their game against, uh, uh, against Cape Verde uh, in the United minute. It was very disappointing for them. They thought they could redeem their image mm. after they lost uh, the first one against uh, the same opponent. But right now, they will see one of it. When you look at the game involving Nigeria and Liberia, the last time out they were in uh, Nigeria, here, they gave us a very tough time. And I feel so disappointed when you look at when the Algerians, the Desert Foxes play, the Ketit Eagles of Tunisia, the, the, the Terenga Lions of Senegal, mm. when these teams play, they go all against, they score as many as five goals, they dispatch their opponent with ease. Why here in Nigeria? We saw what Senegal we did struggle. last weekend. Yeah, 4 1, you saw what Mane did, you know, taking three defenders on and getting a goal. But in Nigeria, we tend to struggle. Even against Liberia, we struggled and struggled. We were not convincing as far as I'm concerned because the Liberians played with confidence. And that's why we need to be extremely careful uh, here because the Eagles, for me, 
are not convincing. They are not looking like a team uh, <laughs> that can that can actually where we can rely on. So now the, the, the Eagles have got lots of stars. I mean, when, when you name big players, they, they're playing top clubs in Europe. Absolutely. And it, it's shocking to see, just like you've mentioned, that um, we get to struggle with some of these teams. Now, the coach said something that was shocking to me because. General has coached the Super Eagles of Nigeria for about six years. Yeah. In my opinion, it looks like he's the longest, longest serving coach we've had in a very long while. Uh, no indigenous coach has been privileged as General. I stand to be corrected. If you think any indigenous coach has uh, you know, had more favors than General, please send us a message on our social media platforms. Go to our Facebook. Uh, page displaying right now and drop your comment. We'll be so glad to hear from you. And let, let's uh, let's feel your pause about this, uh, our coach right now. Now, General has been, uh, I mean, in, in my opinion, has has had everything six years, and um, I, I don't know the kind of fates NFF or what NFF is seeing in him that we're not seeing uh, uh, because I, I mean I feel Eagle is still not convincing enough in in, in all aspects. Yeah, I, we feel that uh, those saddled with the responsibility of leading our sport football. Uh, she will know much better than us, but um, sometimes when Amaju Pini speaks, I get so disgusted with some of his utterances. That's the fact. You know, Shiny and Komios and coach that is inept, that is inept, that is that that is tactically deficient, that that does not when it's when the, the chips are down, it is it, it, it becomes confused. The, it, it, it makes a lot of errors as far as substitution is concerned. When it begins to make, you know, shower and comments on him, I I, I guess so. Uh, so disappointed because right now with the caliber of players at our disposal just like you said we have top class players all over the world victor Simon he was the uh, the best player for the month of uh, uh, the month that just passed mm. in in the whole of italy we've got chilera eduke we've got uh, frank oyeka these are top top players all yeah. over we've got alex we've got indidi these these are players that are highly ranked but you know tactically these guys, when you put them together, you still need the experience, the tactical acumen of the coach, which we are not getting. The, I tell you, Branson, I don't know the kind of faith this bunch of NFF have in general. Troll. I remember in the days of Clemens West, as far as I stand to be corrected, that is the most successful coach Nigeria ever had. Clemens West out. In 1989, when he was saddled with the responsibility of leading the Eagles, mm. yeah, he went to Cameroon then. Was, we had a game. You know, that was the last game by virtue of the fact that we lost against Gabon in Libreville. And then, you know, we lost that game. He, he, he led the Eagles. But he came back in 1990, got the team to the final of the Nations Cup. In 1992, we saw what the Eagles played in Senegal in 1992. It was, the Eagles were very commanding. And then, Continuing from where he stopped in 1994, 1994, we went ahead to win the African Cup of Nations, mm. qualifying Nigeria for the for their first, first ever, ever World Cup. World Cup, and then we got to the second round. He couldn't go beyond the Italians, the Azuris, because of that disappointment. Right now, we are used to losing games, and they will be will be happy. And then, those days, when you lose a game, let, let, I me, shock, let, you, let me shock you. you know, I, I saw a video of the uh, NFL president before that game. He was talking to the players in, in his in his head he was he was motivating the players he was saying you know nigeria we are a footballing nation the country is not uh, very okay right now football is the only thing that makes us happy so we cannot afford to win this game and i was shocked at, at you know at some certain kind of things so i think these guys need to wake up that football is beyond uh, you know, uh, you know uh, for me, I, I just feel it's just like roadside talks. <laughs> really, in, in my opinion. I think for me, if we begin to talk about Pinnick, uh, I tell you, I have a lot of things to say and it might not be too busy <laughs> because uh, okay. for someone who is uh, the, 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 the NFF chairman, you had to go through a lot of, a lot of situation before mm. he could attain that height. And one would have felt that, you know, he has what it takes uh, to lead Nigeria. Right now, Nigerian football is suffering massively. Yeah. Despite the fact that we have caliber player, players, top players scattered all over the world, we are strong, we are struggling. Brown saying the Falcons are down. I hope you remember that. There were under 17 teams are not doing well anymore. We struggle to qualify for World Cup, I mean World Cup tournaments. Not unlike before. When we were the first, we are the when you talk about the under 17 World Cup, we've won it about five the times. Dust hits. Yeah, but right now we struggle to qualify. Under 20, the same thing. What is the NFF, NFF doing? What, what is the board doing? Time will tell, Kule. It, it, it's, a, it's a very big question and uh, it, it saddens uh, most football or sport-loving uh, fans in this part of the country. Now, the last two games of this round is very crucial for us. We must beat Liberia convincingly and, of course, take Kedvet to the cleaners.
market that looks like, uh, I mean, their hopes are high with seven points and Super Eagles nine points. Maybe if we had beaten um, CAR, Central African Republic, it could have been different. But we are the situation we are right now uh, because of the inefficiency of the coach. But let's see how well these guys can turn things around in the last two games. Just four points would be enough to take us to the World Cup. Now, we dedicated the first half of this show to talk about the Eagles. I mean, they are our, our own. We need to give them attention. Let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll take you through what went down in Europe last weekend. Don't go away. What's the difference between regular data and MTN data? I'll show you. With regular data, you get this. But with MTN data, you get moved right into the action like this. And this and this and this with MTN data you don't just get more you experience more Need loads of data to live your dream? Turn it up on MTN, the reliable data network. Welcome back. Now, the French national team last weekend put up a superlative performance. Now, they went on to prove my ideology of football, which has not always been a position of football. Now, the French national team uh, went on against all odds to win that game. Two goals to one, they came back from behind. Now, the Spanish national team in the first half dominated possession as much as 65% um, to their opponent, 35 In the second half, they held possession for a very long time, but possession, we say, doesn't win football. And then for all Manchester United fans, uh, I mean, it was as if United fans were the ones that even won the trophy <laughs> instead of France. Uh, Kule, <laughs> let's look at that game proper. We saw the, uh, the Spanish national team, they will always have that possession. Yeah. They know how to touch the ball, move you know, the ball. Yeah. But football possession time and time again doesn't win games. Yeah. It, you, have to, you have to get to a position of scoring the goal. Yeah, you have to get to the position of scoring the goal. And they started very well. And then um, you could see uh, the way they actually took their first goal well uh, taken. And it was looking as if... Uh, the French national team were going to struggle again. Remember the previous game where they struggled again uh, in the semi-final against Belgium. And then what we'll have thought that, you know, perhaps probably they came back against Belgium. They might not be able to come back mm. uh, against the Spanish national team. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, they came back strong in the second half and they were able to deliver uh, deal, deal, deal the, uh, deal the, 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 the uh, Spaniards a blow. Uh, which was really very good for them, and of course, a disappointing one for the Spanish national team. I actually tip them to win it. Uh, talking about the Spanish national team, with the way they've played uh, since the competition started, and of mm. course, the semi-final game, the way they actually uh, executed that game as well against the Italians. Uh, you know, Italians were about over 30 games on beating, uh, but they were able uh, to get the job done against them. So mm. the final was actually hoping that probably uh, the French national team seems to be slipping at some point in time in, in, in games, uh, they will be able to take uh, the advantage, but it didn't come to being. Uh, let's not forget Brown Singh, uh, the, the quartet of uh, Karim Benzema, yeah. uh, uh, Antoine Griezmann, Antoine Griezmann uh, and, and Kylian Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe are the most deadly in the world, uh, as far <laughs> as, as I'm concerned. Speak. And of course, uh, that proved uh, to be true. Let, let me ask you, Kule, now, let, let, let's look at this picture on the screen right now. Um, this, this goal, look, look at, if you look at the position of Mbappe, to the last defender, is he offside or not? <laughs> uh, from my own perspective, and from I'm sure that the fans have seen it, is a clear offside. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. I don't know. But VAR looked VAR. at it. VAR looked at it time and time again, and <laughs> and confirmed that that ball was a goal. We and don't know. To, to, to my amazement, I, I was shocked to see that. I mean, in English Premier League, Spanish La Liga, Italian Serie A, we've seen where they draw the line, draw the line over and over and over and over. For a ball that that from in, in, in our opinion looks like a goal, yeah, goal VR yeah. will call it for upside. Yeah. And if VR could give this kind of ball as a goal, it left lots of things, lots of questions to be asked. We need to understand the criteria exactly. for for calling an offside. Yeah, it's very disappointing as far as I'm concerned. I don't know uh, the VR and those that are there are the people making those blunders. It's absolutely disappointing. That was a clear offside. I think that the Spanish national team will feel at home. Yeah, I mean, a uh, very sad one. But it's done and dusted. 
Now, Portugal opened the line, opened, um, uh, of course, raised the curtain for this one. Yeah. So now the French national team are the I'm second wrong. in history to have won that tournament. Uh, I mean, we must give kudos to UEFA. I mean, putting up friendly games could be very expensive, especially when you are the team, you know, requesting. But I, I think this format, Africa really needs to look at it and see how we can. Because, I mean, you, you must agree that. The European football is developing. When you see the likes of Kosovo and some other countries, um, Gilberta and the likes, yeah. uh, you know, playing some strong nation, it's helping their football to develop. Yeah, it's helping their football to develop. That was why I said the standard of play, standard of football in Europe is far above that of Africa. I watched some of the games in the African continent in the World Cup qualifiers, and you can compare when you watch uh, the Italians play, play against uh, you know, the Belgians. It's, it's, it's always very explosive. And you could see the final it was an end-to-end -end stuff. So I think that, you know, Africa, we really need to come up. And that was why I feel that, you know, with the fact that we're able to uh, have a new man in the M's, uh, in the uh, in CAF, uh, probably things will have changed. But right now, since it took over, talking about Motepe, nothing seems to be happening no, it's, right it's now. still early days. I, I think, um, it, it, uh, I'm sure they are pro pro no, probably working on structure. Let's give, so. him, let's give him two years and see what comes out. Two years is too far because uh, <laughs> how many years does he have to, uh, you know, for his tenor to come to an end? Oh, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe a 15 months um, should, be, should be enough. Let's see how we'll well see. he can hold on things. Now, away from the European Nations League, last week, world football was on standstill after Newcastle United had new owner. And um, of course, mathematically, now that with all the assets calculated and all of that from the owner, it now means that Real Madrid is not even the richest club anymore. Not Manchester United. Um, not Manchester City. Guess what, guys? The new kid of the blog, um, Newcastle United. Now the richest club. In, I mean, how do you find of this kind of takeover? Uh, now, there were a lot of excitement after that announcements were made. Now, a few hours later, we started seeing Mbappe picture with Newcastle <laughs> and all of that. They were all, you know, I, I, I saw a write-up where... You know, someone's now like quoting Mbappe. Mbappe didn't say that anyway. That I've been dreaming of playing for Newcastle all my life. <laughs> <laughs> but let's look at the impact. What, what do you think this impact will, uh, will bring to Newcastle? Yeah, it's going to bring back, it's going to bring competition, massive competition. Remember that Newcastle used to be a very top club in England back then, mm -hmm. in the days of Alan Shearer. But right now they've dropped down uh, the order with the recent emergence of some of the teams like Manchester City and, and, and all of that. So I think that the new acquisition right now, uh, from what I heard as well, they are going to put in over 300 and something million pounds. On transfer? On transfer. Oh my which God. Which is massive. So Arsenal is in serious trouble right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as well as other teams because by the time they are able to get all those players, my, uh, Newcastle United will be ranked among the top teams in Europe. But you think, uh, in you, England, you, you, you think top players will want to go to Newcastle? Yes. Look, look, we could see what happened with Manchester City. When the money is at Rob, the Rob, disposal... Robio broke the camera's back yeah, when he made that surprise on. move from Real Madrid. Yeah, so and the, I, likes, the likes of Tevez, when United wanted to tie Tevez down, Tevez felt no. And he moved That's a new key. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, that was what brought about the emergence. And of course, Manchester City right now are a top club in England. So I think that by the time they begin to sign security services on the, these players, they are going to be able to, I mean, uh, attract the top, top class players. I think that uh, by the time that happens, uh, Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea. So we're going to be having like big, gonna, we're going to be having like big six, big seven from next season. You know, are you, are you, are you adding Arsenal? Is Arsenal included? No, Arsenal is already out. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal is already out of the big. Yeah, we're going to be having four. like the big five teams. I tell you, mm. the big five: Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea, Chelsea Liverpool, Liverpool, and probably we're going to be having Newcastle because I don't think that Tottenham is not. Tottenham, Arsenal, this and now. Let, 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 let's, are, now so sometimes we talk about players. I will forget about the coach you know, because sometimes the quality of the coach attracts players to the club. Now, when Mike Hughes was the coach of Manchester City, I remember a particular season. I think in two thousand and nine or so, Manchester City played nine game. They played nine straight draws, nine weekend, nine draws. Now that season, the Mike Hughes would have won his first league for uh, for the coach uh, for the club, but. Oh. Because of those draws, nine straight draws, you can Google it and see, and that affected how that um, season turned out. The following season, they looked at um, which big coach can we bring. They brought in Roberto Mancini, and Mancini came in and um, changed the narrative of the, of the team. Now, it is also important the kind of coach that Newcastle would bring in. 
who do you think is available right now to you know to to take that job yeah i think that um, uh, bruce is actually uh, the, he's not getting in the result and it's looking like um, he, there's been talks about whether he's going to be fired yeah, and, and, and all of that replace with probably Conte or Lampard, some of the coaches. I mean, how, how, can, how, can, you, how can you replace Bruce with Lampard? Brown saying these are these, these are guys that don't have experience in. in I mean, I should be think I, I should think that at this level, they should be thinking of poaching some top managers. It, Pep Guardiola has. Um, it, it, I mean, he's saying after this season, he will consider a stand with Manchester City. You can bring him. Uh, Anthony Conte has won the league. His experience. You can bring him. Or you can even put uh, Jose Mourinho away from, 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 I know from you Roma. Talk about Jose Mourinho, Mourinho. <laughs> Everybody has their bad days at, some, at one particular point in time or yeah. the other. Remember the, even the case of Thomas Tuchel. Uh, at some point in time, he wasn't getting the result. I think from, um, from, uh, PSG. From, the, from PSG, he was struggling at some point. And of course, uh, he played in the final and lost. Uh, you know? So uh, Lampard might not, have, uh, get, he might not have done well with Chelsea uh, the last time out. I think that there will always be an opportunity for him so to So he deserves a second chance with Newcastle. He deserves a, a second chance. Let's, so let, let's see how well that Newcastle has a second chance. <laughs> According to Kule, the young child grows. So Lampard stands the chance of winning title if he moves. I mean, we saw the kind of signing he did with Chelsea, yet he didn't know how to use those boys. Spent so much players and he have an idea on how to use them. Maybe when he gets to Newcastle with the new money bags, all that might change his fortune. Uh, I mean, but please, uh, there are some coaches you shouldn't get there. I won't mention them. Maybe Ole. Uh, she don't, she don't find his way there. <laughs> Let's talk about boxing at this time. Last weekend, it was on fire. Um, Tyson Fury, the biggest um, thing in boxing right now, made an emphatic statement after their third meeting, or after his third meeting with Deontay Wilder. I mean, uh, I mean, if, if you're watching just the highlights and see and saw how the game ended, please go and watch the full bout. Uh, yeah, the, what happened at the last stroke of that game did not depict that, uh, what that yeah, bout, bout uh, represented. Yeah. It was, I mean, it, it was a fantastic bout. I saw Wilder coming out to fight. They came up, they gave their very best, but sometimes it doesn't just go your way. Yeah. And um, Tyson Fury for me shows why he's still the gypsy king. Yeah, he's the best in the world right now. No one comes close. I don't know about, uh, you know, so much talk about uh, whether Anthony Joshua will be able to match him. I think time will tell whether uh, that will happen. But uh, looking at the bout, uh, the first bout, uh, actually took place in 2018, if I will remember. I think December 2018. And the game ended, the bout ended in a stalemate. And the, the second one happened last year, and it was a total knockoff, knockout for, uh, you know, Tyson Fury. He got the job done against Wilder. There was, there was no match. But this one was very competitive, mm. and it was looking like Wilder was going to get the victory against uh, Tyson Fury because he was commanding at the start of the bout. He was dominating. He was throwing the jabs and all of that but uh, and you know he actually uh, he, he, at some point in time Tyson Fury kissed the canvas but um, along the line I think when they got to the only bout got to the fifth round uh, one of that's one of the weaknesses of some of these boxers if I might I think uh, when you talk about I remember the case of even my Iron Mike Tyson once you are able to uh, endure him till yes, the fourth, to the fifth, fifth round, round then you you then you stand the chance of knocking him knocking him off uh, if uh, 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 Wilder has continued with the way he started the bout, probably it would have ended well. well. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think at some point in time, he got tired and then um, Tyson Fury took charge from the fifth round. He was giving all the uppers and all of that. And then the last uh, punch, I tell you, <laughs> was absolutely devastating. It was a heavy one, which, you know, knocked him completely off. Uh, uh, you know, immediately after the bout, he had to be taken to the hospital mm. uh, for checkup, for treatment, and all of that. It's, all, it's unanimous. Fantastic. There's no doubt about it. Now, the biggest and the best boxer in the world right now, right now. is and, um, Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, the biggest guy in the kid. And um, I mean, there's it talks about if you're ever going to see um, um, Tyson Anthony, Fury takes Anthony, on Anthony Joshua. Joshua. But first of all, Joshua has to get his belt back. If he doesn't get his title back, we may never get to see that bout. Even though I feel... Um, I, 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 I don't think, I don't think, think Joshua can <laughs> get the job done. Thank you very much, Alak Kuli, for yeah. um, gracing the show today. Always a pleasure to be here. I really hope you enjoyed that. So that is a wrap on the show today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Now, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms currently displaying on your screen right now. You can also go on our YouTube channel, search for Spot Pizza. You can subscribe and, of course, watch previous episode. My name is Brownson Uwana on behalf of my production crew. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.